What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and in today's video we're going to be talking about using Proxmox Backup Server to backup, restore, and make templates of our VMs and containers in Proxmox. So let's get right into it. So if you remember about, probably about a month ago now, we made this Proxmox Backup Server and it's been running ever since and if we take a look through it, I do have a good amount of backups, you can see all of my machines are in here. And these are actually ones that I've been working on lately because I've been using Kali for school and to get this certain program working right was a task. So I made backups to make it work right so I could restore to it. So I'm going to show you how to take care of all of this. Today we are going to be working with my main Proxmox host. This is the one that currently runs all my VMs for my home lab and for school. So you do see I have an XP box, I have some Kali machines, a Docker machine, my Pi-hole container, and we do have this container template that we're going to be working with today. So we're going to start off with backing up a machine. So I'm just going to pick a machine that's probably going to be the smallest just so I can show you quickly how it will work and restore. Then we're going to back up this XP box. It has one of the smaller hard drives out of my machines over here. So I'm just going to show you really quick how to back that up. So if you want to just back up one machine, you can just come over and click on your machine. You're going to come over to backup. And you can see I actually have a couple backups already because I do run a schedule. But you can just come over here and click backup now. And then you can choose what kind of backup you want. So if we click help, it's going to open up the menu uh, to the documentation. And there's three different methods. So there's stop, suspend, and snapshot. Out of the three methods, stop is going to be the best method to use. Suspend would be next. And the snapshot is probably your third. Snapshot keeps the machine rolling. but So it keeps the lowest downtime. But it has a chance that the backup might not be good. Whereas stop is going to shut the machine down and do a full backup. But you're going to have downtime because it has to turn the machine off to do it. So I think right now we're just going to do a quick snapshot just to make this quicker. Typically I do use stop because I want the best backups I can. And then you can just choose if you have it send emails or notifications and then just click backup. So this is going to back up really quick and we'll be back when it's all done. So that machine is all done backing up. We see it says task OK over here. That means the task is all done. The machine's backed up. This is one of the smaller machines so it does take very little time really. Uh, do remember though when you do backups that it's going to be based off how big your hard drive is. So like my Windows 11 machine over here is 250 gigs. So this is probably going to take me like an hour. Probably probably around an hour to back up where this XP machine is only 40 gigs so it's only going to take a few minutes. But if we come over to backup tab now we can see I have my backup so it says 3.6 so here we go. Now, in the situation, if I want to restore my backup, let's say I was working on a machine and I broke something and it's all messed up and I've got to go back to one of my backups, I can just come over here to restore, or you can do file restore, but this one's a little trickier. I tried using this one day and um, it's very intricate, so I don't think I'd really use it this way, but you can come in here and you could actually go through the directories and restore certain files if you want. So my XP box is a Windows machine, so you see it has the Windows structure. So let's say I want to restore this installer folder, so I can actually come over here, grab the folder, and download it, and then inject it back into my VM, but I don't really want to go that route when I do it, so I just restore a whole machine. So let's say I do have something broken on here, and I want to go back to a previous version, so let's say I want to go back to this version I just did, I can just click restore, and we're going to pretty much leave all this default, because that's how it's going to be, and then we're just going to click restore. And it's going to currently erase anything going, so if you have anything going on that machine, it's going to wipe it out, which is fine, because we want to go back to our old version, and we're going to click yes. And we can't restore it because my VMs are running, so I'm going to close this out, and we're going to come over here, and I'm going to shut this machine down, so I'm just going to go in the console real quick. And we're going to power this off. I know it's a Windows XP, I don't know the last time you probably saw this, especially on a server. But we're using this for a class, and that's why I have it running right now. Um, it, it's a pen testing class, and XP is full of vulnerabilities, so that's why we're using XP. But now we can go back over here and restore. So I'm going to come back over here to our most recent backup. We're going to click restore. I hit restore again. Yes. And it's going to go through. It's going to restore the machine really quick. So we'll be back when this is all done. So while this restore is still running, we're going to look at something else back on the backup server, just in the in-between. So if I come over to the backup server, we do have a couple different tabs over here. So I do have my backups with summary. So it's going to show me the summary of my disk usage. And then you can see I have uh, about 400 gigs used. I come over to content. You can see all my VMs that I make backups for. So I have my container from Pi-hole. I have my Kali machine that I had. I have my other Kali machine. I have a couple of Windows VMs, my Docker machine, my XP box, uh, the crafting server for Minecraft, and another Linux server for pen testing. So I have all these. 
And if I expand them all, you can see I have a few a few backups for each one because that's how my backup job runs. So I do make sure I have multiple backups. So there are a few options over here so we can verify all the backups. So if we come into the help documentation, I'm gonna click on this way. You can see verification it has all the info from Proxmox. So pretty much Proxmox is telling us that it's important to verify our backups pretty much at least once a month because depending on your hard drive, they can lose bytes and you can have data loss and then your backups might not be good. So we have two ways we can do it. We come over to the content and we can verify the backup this way. So I can click verify and click verify again. And this is going to go through and it's going to verify all of my backups to make sure that they're all still healthy. Or we can go in another way and do that and I'll show you after this is done. Okay, so we're going to jump a little bit. So this is still running. It is verifying the jobs. Which is fine. We're just going to leave this in the background. We're going to actually jump back over to the main server. You can see over here that the restore is all done. So that would be how we restore from a backup. So now I have my latest version. I can come back over here and power this box on. And it will be able to boot up and get going. So that's how we restore and backup from a backup. Let us check over here. Yeah, this is still running. So that's fine. So we're going to keep working on the Proxmox server side. I'm going to come on to sum summary and we're going to go to data center. We're just going to go over the backup schedule again. I think I covered this in the Proxmox backup server video, but I'm just going to show you one more time how you guys could do it. So you're going to come over to the data center tab in your Proxmox server. This is on the regular PVE side, not on the backup server side. So make sure you're on the Proxmox virtual environment and then you can click on your data center. Now you could do this with any hard or hard drive. You could have a hard drive in your machine or you could have a network share or you could be using the Proxmox backup server like I am over here. And then we're gonna come over to backup and we're gonna click add. And this is how we can actually make our scheduled jobs. So you can pick your storage. So I'm gonna use my backup server. If you're using a hard drive in your machine or a network share, that's fine. Then you could schedule it. So you can choose how you want it to go. So you probably wanna do like a weekly and a monthly. That's how I normally do mine. You could do yours daily or hourly, however you want to do it. So let's just say for fun, I'm going to do Sunday at 1 a.m. And you can come over here and you can select all the machines you want to back up. So if you want to do all of them, you just check them all off. Or you can just do, you know, maybe two of them. There is a selection mode, so you can do include selected VMs, or you can do all of them, or you can exclude the selected VMs, or if you do your pools in Proxmox, you can do it that way. I'm trying to leave you on including selected VMs and then just select the two. You could do default notification mode. I, I'd never be able to get this to work right, but that's okay. So ideally it would email you how to, when it's all done, but I haven't really gotten messed with that yet. And then you can choose your backup type. So I want to do stop because as we read before, that's the most efficient kind. And then you just come over here and click create. So now if we come back over here, we have our new backups and you can see it's right over there. It has my two VMs. I actually want to click and edit this real quick. So I forgot to go over retention so we can change how many backups we keep. So we can keep the last two if we have uh, like that, or you can do the last two dailies and the last two weeklies to keep how many you actually want to keep, which is just fine. Or you can keep all your backups. It really depends on how big of your hard drive is your backups. I have eight terabytes for my backups, so I'm going to keep a lot just so I have multiple backups to work with. That's how you would change the retention options. And then there's also the no template, which is just going to give you the guest name for the machine. I leave this default just so the format is right and it keeps it easier to work with. So now this backup job is all set and at Sunday at 1am it's going to run and it's going to save it over to my Proxmox backup server and it's going to work the same way as my other backups that if I need to I can restore from it and keep working. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how you can take a container or a VM and you're going to make it a template. So I'm going to make a new container really quick. So actually the first thing to check is come over to your data center and click storage. And you want to see which disks support container templates. So if it's something you're going to do in the future, you want to make sure that you can actually do it. So for me, my only one that does is my local disk. You can see it says container template, which is fine. So I'm going to do create CT. We're going to call it Linux template. I'm going to give it a password. I'll click next and I'm going to do local. Give it I'm going to click local. I'm going to give it Ubuntu. 
I'm gonna come over here again and I'm going to give it my local and I'm just gonna leave this default because this is just a quick display I'm gonna give it DHCP so if you are making a container that you want to use in the future you probably want to give it networking so make sure you check off DHCP so it actually gets an address when it comes online I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna leave my host sentence for DNS because that's what I want I'm gonna click finish it's gonna make out the container really quick and we'll be right back so my container's all made, so I'm going to close that out, and now we can come over here, and now let's say I get this all set up, it runs PyHole, or maybe AdGuard Home, or something else, maybe PyVPN, something simple, but you want to make it so you can easily deploy it in the future. You can just come over here and right click, and hit convert to template, it's going to confirm you want to, and you're going to click yes, and now you can see it's down here, it's working, it's converting it to template, and we're just going to give it a second to finish that up, and if when it's all set, let's see. Everything is all done. So we should be all set. And yet, and there it is. It just changed. So now you can come over here and you can see that this was originally above. And now it changed over to a template. And it has a different icon. So now that it's a template, we no longer can actually deploy this and turn it on and use it. Because it doesn't work that way. It's a template. So there's no way to turn this VM on anymore. So you see them over here in my pothole container. I have my power options. Now over here for this container, I don't, they're gone because it's just a template. But I can right click over here and I can clone it. And now we can call it uh, Linux 2, let's say. And I can come over and clone it and just hit clone. And now I have a new container from that template. And it works the same way with VMs as well. But the thing to keep in mind is when you make a template of a container or a VM, you can't use it anymore. It goes away. So it's only a template. So before you make like, you know, maybe a Kali Linux uh, template, and then you still want to use that Kali Linux VM, keep that in mind. You're going to have to make two of them and get that working. All right. So to get back into this, the verify job is still running. Uh, we look over here, you can see it's been running for about 25 minutes. So it is taking a hot minute. So I'm just going to cancel this real quick. So this isn't something you probably want to run, you know, while you're sitting there trying to work on your server. So what we can do is come over to verify jobs and we could add a job and it's going to go through and we can verify our backups. So we'll just fill this out really quickly. So we can run our schedule. So I'm probably going to want to do it weekly. I don't think I want to do this every day. So I think I'm just going to do every Saturday because my backups run Mondays. Let's have a look. So let's see. So I go data center, backup. So my one runs on the first of the month and on Sunday. So let's see how we could do this. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to do every Saturday because I don't have any jobs that run that weekend, that, that day. And at least I know it'll be in between. So I'll always have verified backups in between. So I'm going to do every Saturday. And we're going to do... I'm going to check that off because oh no here we go so we're gonna do skip re-verify skip verify but we're gonna come back over here we're gonna re-verify after let's do 14 days so i'm gonna re-verify every two weeks because i am using an hdd so i want to make sure that nothing's going on with that spin and drive and that everything's good other than that we're gonna look pretty good so i'm gonna click add and now every saturday this is gonna run and it's gonna take probably quite a bit of time so that's gonna be okay the other options we do have over here are prune and garbage collect. So you can come over here and prune down some jobs. You can do it manually. So you can either prune all or you can come through and kind of select what you want. You can remove a backup so you can verify certain backups. So you can do it manually. You also can protect the backup. So if you want to make sure that nothing can happen to them, they can't get deleted. You want, you, know, you want to make sure that they don't get deleted or whatever it might be you can come over here and you can click change protection and you can protect the backup and now that backup's protected it can't get deleted and if you look over here you can see it has the shield and I shouldn't be able to oh maybe I can but it is a protected backup so I don't I think it can't be like overwritten or anything like that but that's how you change the protection of a backup so I know we jumped around a lot, and I know I jump around a lot on my videos, but there were some topics we had to jump back and forth with as jobs are running, but that's how you really use Proxmox Backup Server with Proxmox Virtual Environment. So today we went over how to set up backups, how to run a backup, how to make a clone, and deploy the clone back from a template. We went over how to do verify jobs and set up the schedule to verify your jobs, 
and some more info in between all of that. So if you guys have any questions, you could drop a comment below, or you could join my Discord server and message me in there. I'm always down to chat in the Discord server. I have I have a link below for that, and I also have links to some hardware I use off of Amazon. If you guys want to check out those links, it helps me out, and then you get to use the same hardware as me. So I want to thank everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.